What a wonderful role to be offered, the role of Elizabeth Bishop, who was the Poet Laureate, Pulitzer Prize winning poet, as you mentioned, and such an interesting and difficult woman. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe my luck when I got sent the script, actually. I didn't even know Elizabeth Bishop. I didn't know her work. And, um, you know, just reading through it, both her and Lotta were such incredible women, like, you know, so passionate and driven and um, just living in that amazing world. How did you get to know Elizabeth preparing for the role? Oh, God, I threw myself at everything. I, I sort of worked through her poems. I was reading her, her correspondence with Robert Lowell. Um, there's a fabulous book called Remembering Elizabeth Bishop, which is an oral history from many different people's perspective. Um, Oh gosh, I found recordings of her poetry, okay. which was which just hearing a real person's voice mm. is is quite spooky almost when you're going to play someone and and you know she she's obviously dead and but to have her voice speaking her poetry was uh, a, a real eye opener for me. How do, how did the role come your way? Because it's a it's a complex web. This whole how a movie gets made. The more we talk about it on this program, I think the less I understand because <laughs> it seems the most mysterious process. What what does get through? What doesn't? What collapses? Who ends up with what? I know. Well, how this does was it work? A, this was a very <laughs> digital process because I was here in Melbourne actually. Uh, working on another film and I received an email on a Saturday morning with a, just a direct offer, which isn't very often because often it's auditioning, whereas this was just a direct offer saying this is a film shooting in Rio and at the time Rome and New York. And I, I, at that stage I was also like, yes, yes. please. Tick, I tick, hope the script's tick. good. Um, and then I read the script and I was just blown away. I thought it was such a great story and, um, you know, and not having known these women before, I was completely taken in and shot an email straight back and said, yes, yes, please. There's always a risk that a film like this can be marginalised as, mm. um, as a story, as a, a women's story, but yeah. also a, a lesbian story, if, yeah. if you like. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it with that area being discussed in that way. But it, it's a broader story, isn't it, really, about a time and place, mm -hmm. about a particular woman writer in the 1950s in America and elsewhere who's, who's struggling to sort of to find her voice when she's dealing also with such private demons. Yeah, and it's also a story of two different cultures. Like, a, a, I think it's very much about a love story over a long period of time, mm. you know, a mature love story where a relationship goes through lots of different phases and also the idea of two people from such different backgrounds who, who fall in love and have some similar ideals but are, are very different people and, and, and uh, how they deal with that and, and then eventually sort of what, what pulls them apart. Because a lot of her, her lover was, was firstly quite a prominent architect in Brazil mm -hmm. and unlike Elizabeth had passion and, and real enthusiasm for her life where Elizabeth tended to be more withdrawn, yeah, even, even solitary. Yeah, she's much more introverted, Elizabeth. That's just very much her energy, whereas Lotta is sort of incredibly charismatic and, you know, the, the, the centre of attention and loves it and, and is quite, um, you know, loves to have everyone listening to her and, you know, Elizabeth's completely the opposite. She's that complete sort of waspy uh, East Coast yes, American. Yes, exactly. <laughs> was, it, was it Vassa? Was she an old Vassa girl? Vassa, yeah, yes, that's she right. was a Vassa girl. <laughs> Which explains a lot, I guess. <laughs> there, there is a wonderful um, moment in the film where, where they're, they're confronting each other, uh, the, the, the two women, and uh, and trying, I guess, can it's starting to connect, but but that failure to understand or, or being such different people. And Lotta says, of course I, of course I want it. I, I want everything. I mm. want everything I can get my hands on. And this is such a, a shocking concept to Elizabeth, who's yeah. who, who's struggling to even keep hold of what she is yeah. and what she has. Yeah. That's so true. And I love that line of Lotta's. I think, mm. wow, it's that's that's so um, fantastic to see it's someone admirable, not apologise yes. for, for what they want. You know, yes, I want her to stay and this woman to have the baby and then you to be with me. Why? Why shouldn't I demand? everything of life why shouldn't I take everything I can get now it's beautifully um, shot as I, I mentioned know. the locations are really look if you just want to go and spend a couple of hours watching some gorgeous <laughs> locations you know and seeing some fantastic sets because for those who are into you know architecture and design it's an absolute fantasy of the the, the perfect 1950s modernist home that everyone's always dreamed of yes and I'm sure you must have had that experience too walking around thinking I want to live here I know I mean originally Bruno actually sent me a, a little video of the property that that we used to be someone by it which is actually an Oscar near my house and I just couldn't believe it all those gardens and look at incredibly it. beautiful and is that in Brazil that house yes that is in it's in Petropolis which is about an hour and a half outside Rio up in the mountains so you um, you had I think about eight weeks shooting in Brazil what was that experience like it was very different to, to shooting in other places that the set ran, ran incredibly differently 
um, there were different positions on set and there was just no sense of time in Brazil. Everything just sort of <laughs> happened as it happened. It was so much more chaotic. It took me so long to get my head around it because I think Australians are quite, you know, we, we think we're easy going but we're quite regimented yeah. and we like our rules and we like to be organised and yeah. so it was a real test of, of of uh, my my skills at trying to deal with um, Brazilian time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> this this one really should have been released before the World Cup. I think yes. the, the attendance rates would have just tripled <laughs> if enough people had seen that hey, gorgeous scenery. You're pretty busy. You've uh, uh, starred in the US spin-off of Rake. Yes. How yeah. did that go? Working alongside Greg Kinnear, and is it as good as Richard Roxburgh's ah, version? I know ah, it's putting you on the oh, spot that here. That is putting me on the Be spot. Be careful here. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, I have a real soft spot for the Australian one. I do. I mean, look, we had a lot of fun making it. It, it was great. Is fantastic yeah, too, he's isn't terrific. Mm. Very, very funny. We had a great cast, actually. But, it, it, um, it's, yeah. it's an enormous shame. I mean, I've not seen it yet, but um, I, I saw the shorts and it, and it really did look terrific and, and great casting. And I hear it's been cancelled after just one season. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty ruthless Isn't in America. It's really network television. You've yeah. got to you've got to rate right in there really fast because mm. it was so, um, it was such a great um, Philip for for the Australian you know TV scene. That, yes, that this wonderful yeah. you know ABC production was being picked up yeah. and American version made. So um, I don't know. Maybe we need to wait for the um, for the cable channels to sort of get their head around something as edgy and interesting in this. And maybe relaunch it? Maybe. Who knows? I mean, the cable is in some ways where something like this maybe should sit because you've got exactly. more room to um, be a little bit more out outlandish, yeah, I think. Yeah. Look, um, uh, it's really great to, to meet you and, and congratulations on the film. Thank you. What's your next project? Maybe something here. There's a couple of films that have come up here. Just when I've kind of moved to the States and got myself all set up over there, I've come back and there's a couple of films that are happening here that, that um, I'm trying to work out about doing. But it's all about oh, nice kids and education mm. and where they're going to school and all that. So real life stuff. Out. Yeah, yes. real life stuff. Well, look, um, we had uh, Gracie on the couch here a little while oh, ago. Fantastic. Your, your sister of uh, promoting um, her film. Are you sending us another Otto next week to sit on the couch <laughs> and chat to us? Barry's too. Yeah. I'll send Barry in. Yeah, and Barry then, I, in. then I can send my husband. Yeah, and then, well. we've, then we've got the full set. Yes. <laughs> Good on you, man. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thank you. Thank Cheers. you.